Coming up on today's episode of Airborne Unlimited. The Collings Foundation helps the Evergreen Museum become viable. Gamma reports on 2015 second quarter aircraft shipments. Facebook looks to drones for internet connectivity. I'm Bree Cross, it is August 4th, 2015, and this is Airborne Unlimited. The Collings Foundation has reportedly reached an agreement with the Evergreen Museum in McMinnville, Oregon, to purchase many of the assets of the museum and make it a viable entity going forward. It is reported that Rob Collings, Executive Director of the Collings Foundation, said that the organization has been working with the museum for some time to find a solution to issues that arose when Evergreen Air Freight declared bankruptcy. He says there was a huge amount of debt levied against assets at the museum. Now Collings says the foundation has reached an agreement with the creditors and the museum to prevent the museum and its aircraft from being sold at auction to satisfy the debt. However, there is still a dispute between the foundation and the city of Stowe, Massachusetts, where the organization is planning to build a 66,000 square foot museum on its property there. The city of Stowe has not approved needed zoning changes that would allow the museum to operate. Hunter Cheney, director of marketing for the Collings Foundation, wrote, quote, this is just a sampling of the nefarious actions the Stowe boards have created in their selective governance. We can't begin to express our most deep disappointment in the town's elected and appointed officials." End quote. The General Aviation Manufacturers Association has published the 2015 second quarter aircraft shipment data. The numbers improved over first quarter, but are down compared to the previous year. Industry airplane shipments fell 9.1% for the first half of the year, and airplane billings declined 4.6% compared to the same period a year ago. Rotorcraft shipments decreased from 502 units to 447 units, and billings were down an estimated 16.8% for the first six months. The number of piston airplanes delivered fell 11.8%. Turboprop shipments also declined 9.9%. Business jet manufacturers shipped 305 airplanes compared to 318 airplanes last year. Piston rotorcraft declined to 130 shipments, while turbine rotorcraft dropped from 358 units in 2014 to 317 units in 2015. Gamma President and CEO Pete Bunce said, quote, Robust new product development continues in each of our member companies accentuating the need for streamlined certification processes and efficient validation mechanisms between regulatory authorities. Finally, fair global competitiveness for all Gamma members rests on the need for a global level playing field. Therefore, export-import bank reauthorization remains a key priority for manufacturers." End quote. After the break, Facebook proposes drones to connect with remote regions of the world. Now certified Aspen Avionics single band ADS-B, ATX-100 and ATX-100G transceivers are the next gen ADS-B solution that provides the features pilots need while keeping flyaway costs low. Check it out now at AspenAvionics.com. Redbird is quickly becoming the industry standard for flight training. Since Redbird introduced its revolutionary FMX in 2007, colleges, universities, and flight training operations around the world have integrated Redbird products into their curriculum. It's time to discover what Redbird can do for you. Join the migration. AML's patent-pending wireless induction charging system eliminates confusion over those charging cables, cuts down cockpit cable clutter, and allows you and your passengers to fly cordless and eliminate the cable nightmare. www.aviationmodificationleaders.com Welcome back. If you have a story suggestion for Airborne Unlimited, Aero TV, our website, or podcast, just email to news-spy at aero-news.net. If your business success relies 100% on internet connectivity, it behooves you to connect as many people as possible. Such is the case with Facebook and they are taking action. Facebook has completed a full-scale version of a UAV it hopes will allow the company to provide internet access to underserved populations worldwide. The UAV, named Aquila, 
is a high-altitude, long-endurance aircraft that is now complete and ready for flight testing. Aquila has a wingspan of a Boeing 737, but is very lightweight. When deployed, it will be able to circle a remote region for up to 90 days, beaming connectivity down to people from an altitude of 60,000 to 90,000 feet. A news release from Facebook says, quote, The intention is not to build networks and then operate them ourselves, but rather to quickly advance the state of these technologies to the point that they become viable solutions for operators and other partners to deploy, end quote. Every Tuesday, we're going to look ahead at some of the more interesting events in the aviation universe. Here is this week's Aero Calendar. Saturday, August 8th, marks the event known as Wings Over Halls, that's touted as returning to a time when, quote, age meant nothing and freedom meant everything, end quote. It's an air show that recounts those years during World War II and is being held on a former B-17 training base 55 miles north of Memphis. 30 aircraft will be performing in the show. Starting on August 7th and running for a long weekend, you'll find the Abbotsford International Air Show being held at the Abbotsford International Airport in British Columbia, Canada. This is a major air show listing more than a dozen performances ranging from military jets to professional air show acts. Starting on August 11th and running through the 13th, it's a Latin American business aviation conference and exhibition, otherwise known as La Base, being held in Sao Paulo, Brazil. This is Latin America's largest event aimed at business aviation. Both domestic and foreign exhibitors will be there in force as Brazil embraces general and business aviation. Now we take a look at a hometown event on Saturday, August 9th in East Troy, Wisconsin. It's called the East Troy Airport Open House and Pancake Breakfast. Admission is free and breakfast is affordable. There will be airplane and helicopter rides, World War II aircraft on display, radio-controlled aircraft, and so much more. Remember, aviation activities can range from major air shows to simple fly-ins sponsored by a local EAA chapter. The big air shows are great, but the friendly and welcoming atmosphere of a local fly-in can be just as much fun. After these messages, Beverly Scott recommended for an NTSB position. Concorde's recombinant gas RG series sealed battery technology produces a high performance battery with the advantages of being pre-tested and fully charged at the factory. Find out more about Concorde's entire line of batteries at www.concordbattery.com. Concord, the heart of your aircraft. Sandia introduces the new SAI 340 Quattro TSO'd airspeed, attitude, altitude, and slip. With integral backup battery, safety never looked so good. See it now at www.sandia.aero. The KSN 770 is an affordable, WAS enabled integrated MFD with a flexible hybrid user interface from Bendix King. Get your fingers on the 770's perfect blend of touchscreen and hard buttons. Easily control your GPS navigation, navcom, weather, traffic, and terrain in any condition. For more information, go to BendixKing.com. There's a difference between charting a steady course and pushing for the ceiling. And for nearly a century, Hartzell Propeller has been defining that difference. It's in our passion for engineering and research and our dedication to testing the limits of performance. We are built on honor. We are Hartzell Propeller. Welcome back. With so much news coming out of the aviation industry, we're summarizing some other interesting stories in a brief segment we call Around the Patch. The former head of the Massachusetts Bay Transportation Authority has been nominated by President Obama for a position on the NTSB. Beverly Scott must be confirmed by the U.S. Senate for a five-year position on the board. The first Rotorcraft Certification Summit is being planned for October 27th in Dallas, Texas. A key topic will be discussing and debating improvements to certification procedures and needed revisions of the Rotorcraft Certification Standards. Top industry officials are expected to attend. The Helicopter Foundation International annually offers up to 19 scholarships to help support students studying to become part of tomorrow's vertical lift aviation industry. The scholarships are aimed at reducing the shortage of qualified commercial helicopter pilots and maintenance technicians. The FAA has approved the installation of the Rockwell Collins AHC-3000A 
Attitude Heading Reference System into the Learjet Model 60. The STC Retrofit Package will be offered through Butler National subsidiary Butler Avionics Inc. A superior Wisconsin skydiving company says the NTSB was nitpicking in its probable cause reporting regarding the collision of two skydiver airplanes. The NTSB determined the probable cause was pilot error and lack of training. Well, that's our trip around the patch. Now let's move on to the rest of the news. The U.S. Marine Corps' F-35B Lightning II aircraft reached initial operation capability on July 31st with a squadron of 10 F-35Bs ready for worldwide deployment. Marine Fighter Attack Squadron 121, based in Yuma, Arizona, is the first squadron in military history to become operational with an F-35 variant following a five-day operational readiness inspection, which concluded July 17th. As the future Marine Corps' tactical aviation, the F-35 will eventually replace three legacy platforms, the AV-8B Harrier, the F-A-18 Hornet, and the EA-6B Prowler. The U.S. Marine Corps has trained and qualified more than 50 Marine F-35B pilots and certified about 500 maintenance personnel to assume autonomous organic level maintenance support for the F-35B. General Joseph Dunford, Commandant of the Marine Corps, said in part, quote, the F-35B's ability to conduct operations from expeditionary airstrips or sea-based carriers provides our nation with its first, fifth-generation strike fighter, which will transform the way we fight and win." End quote. Well, that's our program for today. Remember to get comprehensive, real-time, 24-7 coverage of the latest aviation and aerospace stories anytime at aero-news.net. Remember that Airborne Unlimited is streamed daily Monday through Friday with additional breaking news bulletins for important stories that fall outside of our normal deadlines. Please join us and a growing roster of over 100 outstanding industry associations and organizations every weekday for the best in aviation and aerospace news from the staff of the Aero News Network, the aviation world's most comprehensive news and information resource.